And where I got the plans for this, it was actually in 2009 from the internet at this website, PrimelineAmerica.com, which if you go look it up, you'll find is, I think, no longer active. Maybe the Wayback Machine will have it, and maybe not. So it was Rel007 at Verizon.net. I think he actually passed away. And yeah, two sets of lantern batteries. These are the specific plans. As you see, and here, this is the relay that I used 275-218C. 275-218, that's basically it. And again, here is the pinout on the relay. Yeah, that's whenever you're using this thing, you always want to put it in the safety position afterwards to see where there are no connections on the left and right. All this does, the left half is one switch, the right half is another switch. It just joins two switches at the same time. This black plastic insulates and separates the two um, switches. That's what you call a double pull single throw. You can pull two switches with a single throw, basically. So he goes on about it, about the ignition coil, about the specific, like, a 1960s GM Del Delco Remy, for a G an ignition coil for a 67 Buick LeSabre, and that is essentially i brought this into the auto parts store and asked for an ignition coil and this is what they hooked me up when i said external condenser make sure you get that type now this one i also want to try i got this at the mit flea market same idea this one already has a little spark gap at the top and there's your plot positive is here this is obviously the negative i put this hose clamp on it myself just like I put this hose clamp on it. I want to do L brackets on either side of the hose clamp so that I can cinch the hose clamp down over the L brackets which will be screwed into the, the piece of wood here and keep this thing stable. That's just the stability. Same thing, I want to put L brackets on either side of these batteries and keep them all in stable. Or just get a smaller 12 volt source that'll give me, you know, 6 or 7 amps. Right, the AC Delco, 35 to 50,000 volt, the XL, and uh, Wells, Borg Warner, and he goes on about it. Again, this information is from, uh, this was printed out January 2009, so the information's a little old, but not that far off when we're dealing with parts made in the 60s. Or to support people who still um and the, this instruction kit comes with parts for making a plasma globe and to power a helium neon laser of only a one to two milliwatts so i made a few of my, my own notes there here supposedly if you can find that prime line america project 2001 jpeg and then what I printed out was there. And then what he sent me in the mail is this. Well, he calls this a Tesla coil, but it's technically not. It was, I think something like this was invented by Tesla, but the primary and secondary coils inside of here, underneath all the insulation that is kept like, with some type of oil probably to suppress v the voltage arc overs so it doesn't flash over primary to secondary this is also what's known as a Rumkoff type coil which I think existed before Tesla's coils I think Tesla actually worked with the Rumkoff coils before his own but because Tesla is so popular and say, oh, if it's a high voltage, tall cylindrical coil and it emits high voltage sparks, it must be a Tesla coil. Eh, not always. Even the giants stood on shoulders of other giants. So and it goes on. It gives you a little explanation of Ohm's Law, as I've done in some of my other videos. 
the components and here it is again he, he goes over all the details for what kind of ignition coil to get remember the higher the voltage you are the more safety precautions you should want to uh, to pursue and invest in and study up on this is just all the wiring parts here he goes on for pages and he does a really good explanation and then he goes into this cathode ray tube which given once you get 30,000 volts a cathode ray tube could produce x-rays yeah don't want to mess around with x-ray and long-term exposure or you get stuff like you know cancer so it basically making a uh, talks about putting rubber sh or cork stoppers into a tube and pulling one through to create a small vacuum and then there's a plasma globe which I actually did several years ago in one of my older videos with an actual Tesla coil with a small light bulb that's all it really is and then for powering a uh, helium neon laser you see his copyright is 10 years ago that's when he put this all together and he puts together these little wiring diagrams first and this is basically what I followed battery set A on the left hook it up to your switch and hook up your relay pins I followed his directions I did just what it says and that's battery set A and his switch and the relay and that didn't make it sound like a buzzer and repeat back and forth. And battery set B, I'll get everything up to the ignition coil. Granted that part A, make the buzzer part is already done. Then you additionally hook up the ignition coil, the condenser, and have a spark gap. I like the spark gap. I'm going to use it in other projects as well. So, and then this is basically what he does for making this little um, vacuum tube with conductors like uh, on either side. It's what you do with the corks and epoxy the holes to make you know a vacuum and push the nails through, and then you get your tubing. I'm a little concerned actually about this recommendation of plastic because under high voltages that's gonna melt. The heat inside will rise if you get an arc. And when it melts then the vacuum will collapse and it's just a sudden surprising mess. Don't like the sound of it here. And then your stopper's pulled down by a tube in your pan. And that's supposedly your cathode ray tube. And then he goes on about the plasma globe that you simply put it on top of your ignition coil and you bend a coat hanging around connect to your hot or center post of a coil and that's all it's basically imagine a uh, light bulb sitting on top of here with this nail cut down and what have you so yeah and it also came with these full color photos in the mail for pretty much exactly how to what goes to the switch what goes to the relay and then the whole thing all together with what goes to the ignition coil that's how he did his spark gap it doesn't have to be exactly how i did it or how he did it just all the connections need to be made properly and he gives some troubleshooting pages and everything so that is what that Primeline America project was all about there, yeah. For the ignition coil sparker. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.